The other day I dropped my phone on the ground. This is not the first time I've done this, uh, but this particular time, not only did I crack the screen, but I damaged the phone to the point that I am not able to even get a response from, from touching the screen. Now that's a big problem because now I'm not able to log in to my phone. I'm not able to get access to the phone or any of my pictures that I have on the phone. I'm sure I am not alone in this situation. There are probably many people out there that have had the same thing happen to them. I'm going to show you how using readily available tools, using Linux as our platform, we are able to not only gain access to the phone, but we're able to continue using the phone as if nothing happened. Let's go ahead and get started with the video. Yeah. Fresh from Renzi's on my chest like a bag Self-taught, stayed hungry, made the struggle my path They ain't see the vision, mark the way I move But I kept on running even when I could improve Idea in my head, couldn't leave it behind Build it from scratch, one USB at a time They ain't hire me, fine, I made my own lane Turn passion to a brand, now they all know the name yeah. Linux ain't a system, it's a part of my core all right, so the things that I'm going to show you in this video pretty much apply to any phone that is running the Android operating system. Some of the things that I'm about to show you may also apply to phones that are running iOS, uh, but I can't guarantee that. So if you take a look at this phone, uh, you, you will see that nothing is happening. I'm, I'm getting no response by initiating key presses on the screen. None. None whatsoever. So I'm going to show you the tools that we are going to use for this video. First and foremost, you're going to need a USB cable. A cable that is not just capable of simply charging the phone, but something that has the ability to transfer data. We're also going to be using an OTG adapter. OTG stands for on the go. This will allow us to connect additional USB devices to the phone. And finally, I'm going to be using a mini wireless keyboard. This retails for about $10 online. And this is going to be essential for us to be able to get into this phone. Now this particular model, it comes with a, a dongle. You open up the back of it there's a dongle inside of it and then I'm simply going to plug the dongle into the OTG adapter like so and then we're going to plug the OTG adapter into the phone okay so as you can see I have the dongle for the wireless mini keyboard plugged into the OTG adapter. The OTG adapter is plugged into the phone. Now this is incredibly straightforward, very simple. I'm gonna power on uh, the keyboard and you'll see that as soon as I initiate a key press, you can see that the screen of the phone lights up, takes me right to the password prompt. So we are essentially able to enter in the password into our phone. And this is the first step in this process. This is going to be very important. If we, can't, if we can't enter in the password, then we're not going to be able to get anywhere with the phone. And when I hit enter on the keyboard, we are able to get into the phone. So even in spite of having absolutely no response from the screen of our phone, with a $10 uh, device, we are able to get into the phone. Now, if you don't have one of these lying around, then you, you, um, you may be able to get some level of success uh, from a mouse. So you could use a wireless mouse or even a mouse with a cord on it. And the same concept, you're just going to plug the dongle or the, the, um, the wire to the uh, mouse into your OTG adapter. It's going to be a little bit harder because you're going to have to navigate with a mouse, uh, but you can, you can still do it. Okay, so now that we have gained access to the phone, 
the next step in this process is going to be to enable developer options and then enable USB debugging. Now for this uh, task, even though I am using a, a mini wireless keyboard that has a uh, mouse functionality, I've actually found this to be a little bit easier just using a regular mouse. So I'm gonna switch over to the mouse. Dark night, streets cold, chasing highs in the haze. Empty bottles, empty pockets, lost in the maze. Friends fell away, deals went south, I hit the floor. Looking for a way, I couldn't take it anymore. Codes and locks weren't just puzzles, they were keys. Then it's called my name, whisper, come in the breeze. Terminal glowing like a beacon. Now, for most phones that are running Android, the process is going to be identical. In order for us to enable developer options, you're first going to have to get inside of your settings. An icon for my settings is in the lower left of the screen. So that made it relatively easy for me to get access to my settings. Once you're inside of the uh, settings, you're looking for a tab that gives you information about your phone. For me, that shows up under a tab that is literally called About Phone. I'm using a mouse, so I have to double click. Once I'm inside of the About Phone tab, I'm going to be looking for software information. And specifically, I am looking for build number. That is the key component of this process. You want to locate build number for your phone inside of the settings. Now, I have already enabled developer mode, so I do not need to do this, uh, but typically you click on it seven times and then you will be asked to insert your, your password for the phone and then you will have enabled developer options. Now, if I back out to the uh, main settings and go all the way down to the bottom underneath about phone, I have a new tab that is available. It is called developer options. If I click on developer options, there's going to be a, a nice healthy list of things available to me that were not available before doing this. Uh, but the main thing that I am interested in as pertains to this specific video is going to be USB debugging. So we are going to enable USB debugging. Having USB debugging is very important uh, because we're going to be using a utility that relies on ADB, the Android Debug Bridge, and that is gonna require that we have USB debugging enabled. So now that I've enabled USB debugging, we're gonna head over to the command line. Pseudo when I move, though, privilege on the man. Pipes flow together like a beat in the command. SSH tunnels, I'm connecting through the globe. H top running, see the process overload. APT installed on my tools in the stand. And we're going to install two different utilities. Uh, one utility is ADB. If I do a what is on ADB, we get back that it is the Android debug bridge. I can do APT info on ADB that will pull up a little bit more information. ADB is basically a versatile command line tool that allows you to communicate using an emulator instance or a connected Android power device. Now, this essentially is going to allow us to communicate with our Android phone from the command line, even getting access to the phone via a shell, all provided to us by ADB. The second utility is referred to as screen copy, and this is used to display and control your Android device. I can do a APT info on screen copy that'll pull up more information. And this application provides display and control of your Android device connected over USB or over TCP IP. And the best thing about screen copy is that it does not even require root access. But as I said, you do need to have USB debugging enabled on the phone. So we can install both of these packages at once 
very easy from the command line by running sudo apt install adb and scrcpy. Once you have those installed, you can pull up the help menu for each one of those utilities respectively by running dash dash help. So for example, if I run ADB with dash dash help, we'll pull up the help menu for that, and I can run SCRCPY with dash dash help, and it will pull up the help menu for screen copy. We're going to start up the ADB server by running the command ADB start dash server. We need to initiate an ADB connection from our machine to the phone. In order for us to successfully get that connection, there's going to be a pop-up on the phone and we have to click allow on that pop-up because there's a key exchange that is done with ADB. We, we can't, it is not easy for us to make that connection and click allow simultaneously. Unless you have a USB splitter that, that would function on, on a phone. I don't have one of those. So there's a little bit of trial and error with this. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start up ADB. We're going to start up the ADB server by running ADB start dash server. That'll start up ADB. Next, we're going to connect to the phone. You're going to see a pop up on the phone. And this is where we would allow USB debugging and there is a key exchange that is made. Um, we need to press allow, but we don't have functionality on the phone. So we can't, we can't do that. So we need to unplug this. And when we unplug it, this box is probably going to disappear. But what I have found is that if you just, if you just kind of repeat the process, a couple times eventually you'll be able to get the box to stay on the screen and that's what we're after so I'm gonna get my OTG adapter ready to go I'm gonna unplug it and I'm gonna quickly plug the adapter in it's probably gonna disappear it did I'm gonna repeat the process here's the pop-up again unplug it Plug in the OTG adapter. So it took me four tries to get that to work. And now I'm going to click on always allow from this computer, which is very important. What that will do for us is once we initiate this key exchange one time, we will not have to do it again. Uh, this process will be, this part of the process will be taken care of for us and we can connect to the phone in the future simply by plugging it into our machine with a USB cable. This will allow us to do what we need to do, get any information off of the phone that we need to get and move forward with this process. So I'm going to now click on allow. Uh, so now the key exchange has been taken care of. The phone is trusting this computer. We can get rid of the mouse and the OTG adapter. I'll plug the USB cable back in. You see that we no longer get a pop-up on the screen. Now back on the command line, I'm going to run SCRCPY and I'm going to run this with dash dash always dash on dash top and what that will do is uh, in spite of any other things that I may have open on my desktop like my terminal emulator the mirrored display of my Android phone will always remain on top of my workspace so let's go ahead and hit enter and you can see that a server is actually pushed to the phone 
and we now have the phone mirrored on the screen. Now we're getting a little bit of, uh, we're, we're getting some key presses that are taking place on the phone because of the severity of the damage to the screen. Uh, but we have our Android phone being mirrored to the desktop of our Linux machine. This is absolutely amazing that you can do this. So using this very simple command line utility, screen copy, we are now able to display, mirror, and control our Android phone right from our Linux desktop. This is absolutely incredible that you are able to do this and this was so easy to get up and running. So even in spite of the fact that my screen is essentially damaged beyond even being able to initiate any key presses, I can still control my phone. I have full functionality of my phone from my desktop using a mouse and a keyboard. If I need to type something, I can type it with the keyboard and anything else I need to control, I can control with my mouse. So if I want to navigate on the uh, screen of the phone to different apps, I can do so using the mouse. Now, currently, I don't have anything turned on on the phone, but I can do that if I want to uh, turn on Bluetooth. I can do that if I want to turn on Wi-Fi, then I can do that. As I said, it's, it's just as simple as a key press uh, from the mouse. So now at this point, anything that I need to get off this phone, I can go ahead and do that now. In fact, we even have drag and drop functionality Screen Copy is an incredibly powerful utility. We're really only scratching the surface as far as its capabilities. Uh, my main point in this video is uh, to simply show that you can use this utility to display and control your phone. So if you have damaged the phone, if you have damaged the screen, you can still get access to the phone and the things that are on your phone by using this utility and more importantly from, from Linux, from our Linux workstation. That's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you guys got something out of this. As always, if you have not done so already, please stop what you're doing, hit that subscribe button. It's such an easy thing for you to do. It, it costs you no money, just a few seconds of your time, but it greatly helps me out and it helps get my videos to more people. I would appreciate that very much. As always, keep learning and stay fresh. We'll see you in the next video. Keep learning and stay fresh. Fresh for instance. Baby, no less. Subscribe to the channel, don't you stray. Fresh for instance, we're the best. Click that bell, don't miss the sound Fresh forensics all around From hacks to facts, we hold it down Building the future ground by